can't do this in any other country. Where man. is this group now uh, on their journey? Yeah, so this is the uh, sixth caravan that, that has left um, since Claudia Sheinbaum became president of Mexico. Five have left Tapachula and one left uh, Tuxtla Gutierrez, all in the state of uh, Chiapas. This particular one uh, left this morning uh, out of Tapachula. And their goal is to reach central Mexico, um, more specifically Mexico City, which is a sanctuary city. And just north of there, that's where they hop on the freight train, La Bestia. And that's how they make it to border towns like Piedras Negras and cross to Eagle Pass, something we saw in all of 2023 when we saw those mass groups crossing there. They were all arriving in uh, on train to Piedras Negras by the hundreds and occasionally on, by the thousands. And um, talking to some of these migrants um, in these caravans, um, now that they've realized that President Trump is coming into office, um, it's having a, a the effect that was uh, somewhat unexpected. They're not gonna go back to their country of origin. They feel the pressure of making it to the U.S. border and into the U.S. Uh, before Inauguration Day, uh, hoping that they can still make it under the Biden administration and, and be accepted into the country. Okay, but with that logic, though, uh, President-elect Donald Trump has said that every person here illegally and undocumented uh, will be deported by however way or means there. Uh, that's words from President-elect Trump. So based on that logic, why are they still coming? Why are these people still forming these caravans trying to get to the United States uh, with those designs, with those plans? Um, being put in place here. Stephen Miller, who's going to be a key policy advisor in the next Trump term, said on Fox News uh, a couple of days ago that this is priority number one on day one. So why? Yeah, so I've been to Tapachula and I've spoken to, to a lot of these migrants and gotten to, to know their thinking, their thought process. And Tapachula is ground zero for the migrants. And, and there's a differentiation, differentiation that needs to be made uh, there in, in Tapachula with the migrants. Um, there's some that um, once you know where they're coming from and their economic status, you know where, where they're gonna cross and how they're gonna cross. So for example, those with the resources will pay the organized crime. And most of them were crossing, um, they were flying into border towns like Mexicali, Monterrey, and uh, they, they would cross in different border towns. Uh, the ones we're seeing in caravans, uh, they're the poorest of the poor. They, they've sold whatever they had back in their country of origin. They don't have anything. Um, and that's why they're going from um, shelter to shelter, NGO to NGO. And um, at this point, they sold everything. And their thinking is, um, I have no other goal in, in life right now uh, than to make it into the US and give it a shot. And if I get deported, well, then it's, it's going to be on their dime, meaning the U.S. Uh, taxpayer is going to pay for it, and they don't have to go back um, with their resources. That, that's their logic. That's their thinking. And right now, it's, they're running out of time, and, and that's why they're going to make a mad rush uh, to the border, something that I've been uh, reporting. Yeah, I don't know.